Hello everyone and welcome to Flame 204 here at FXPHD, John Montgomery with you and today we're going to dive into more expressions and we're going to take a look at a little project I did that was inspired by something I saw at NAB. Basically a company in New York had taken some footage and shot a bottle on footage with light glares and drips and so forth, projected it on a 3D, G, 3D geometry allowing them to do some cool moves and stuff on it as opposed to just dealing with a flat image plane. So let me just show this to you and uh, we'll talk about the project after I show it. And so what this was is it was just a little uh, tag thing uh, for an advertisement on a sporting event. The goal on this was not to make something that looked in completely photoreal, you know, something stylized, graphic in nature, um, you know, just something that I had to have a little fun with, okay? So one of the problems was that uh, I didn't have a 3D artist available to me. This was kind of a really tight turnaround, a one-day job. And um, so what we did is actually shoot uh, some stills of a bottle and map it onto some geometry using projector. Now I'm going to show it a little bit different here for this because I want it to be applicable to smoke. But uh, effectively recreated this spot for you guys. So basically what we did is uh, grab the bottle and then here's a shot of uh, David, our employee here in Chicago, FXPHD, putting it on this crude uh, disc. Now we actually had a nicer one when I did this, but basically marked this around with little tick marks for degrees and basically shot the bottle uh, with, you know, just in our studio here and rotated around. So we had a full 360 of this bottle when we were done. Now I knew that I would be animating the bottle really quickly. So I know I didn't need to have a lot of granularity in the movement that we had. And what I ended up with uh, was effectively this, and it's really big if we take a look at it. What is it? 4,000 by 3,000. Uh, I'll go ahead and zoom out here. And let's look at the proxies on it. And this is what we ended up with. So quite a few problems, a little bit of jitter and judder and so forth. And the idea being, the end result would be that I would use this, and I would animate the slip value of this media layer projected onto the bottle to make it look as though we were rotating the bottle around. Okay, so in this case, what you're seeing here is not the bottle rotating, but it's just basically the textures animated on the bottle. Um, and, and again, what's interesting about it is I, I didn't, I'm not a big 3D guy. I probably could have modeled this and done everything with it, but it would take me way too long. This was actually a really good shortcut. I knew I could do it fast with the animation that I did here in Flame. And actually the product ended up being, you know, just quite effective for it, especially if we start doing things like talking about adding depth of uh, field blurs and so forth. And you can see by shooting the 4,000 by 3,000 pixel images, you can actually get in quite close here on the bottle um, and have it look good. Now, of course, you don't get the real play in light like you would if it was rotating around and so forth. So um, anyway, but again, let's go ahead and get dive into the meat of this and what I did for this. Um, basically, just went into action. So let's go into action and load up my base model that I had loaded in. This is what I start out with. I downloaded a Heineken bottle uh, from the web. I came in a FBX, a 3DS Max, and an OBJ, OBJ variety. And you can download these bottles. We don't have it because, again, I paid for this bottle when I did this. But you can use, you know, download it yourself and use this technique so it's not a big deal. But the first thing that I want to talk about actually when setting these things up, and I know many of you people are smoke editors watching this and maybe not doing as much compositing stuff, I wanted to get all the coordinates correct on the bottle so that they made sense. Now, if we take a look at this, this is the way it came in effectively. Uh, I actually got rid of a lot of extra stuff. But the main thing is I had a bottle uh, as well as a cap on the bottle. If you take a look at the axis, I do this rotation, that's not making sense. Um, an X rotation, also not making sense. It's just not positioned correctly in 3D space. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and center up this object. So, so we're going to take our axis and center it on top of the bottle. And the way to do this is let's go ahead and first go up into our top view to do this. And you can see um, how far off we are here actually. Let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the submaterials on our cap, which is a green Heineken bottle. And then we'll just take and move this axis 
And of course, if you take Alt and hold it, you know that you can just move the center point. You can see the center point's moving. And then I'll just go ahead and kind of move this back to the center point of our scene. Again, the top view, I'm not getting any kind of, you know, weird perspective stuff with the camera. I'm just getting a straight on orthographic view. And what I did is I went ahead and I just wanted to zoom in really tight on this. So let's go ahead and I'll just move this to where I think the center is. And now if I take this and rotate it, you can see, well, the rotation's looking pretty good, but we really want to make sure this is really accurate. So I'll go ahead and, and just make this really, really big. You can see how far zoomed in I am. Because what we want to do is actually use that amount. So let's go ahead and go back to zero rotation here. And to figure out the center point, I started using the star. Okay, but if we take a look at this, and I rotate it in Y, you can see that I'm getting some wobbling over here on the edge. So it's not really quite perfect. So what I did is I kind of took this point and I say, okay, let's, this is the center point. You have these notches here and here in the bottom. And let's hope that these are symmetric. So we'll go here and we'll measure this. And you can see I'm measuring my Z point here. And my Z point is 311.44. Uh, and I'll go ahead and position this in X, like this, in the center, at least really close, and put in 311.44. And now when I rotate it, you can see that we're, you know, for all intents and purposes, for this spot, especially take a look at the right edge, it's really close to it. My rotation's looking pretty good and centered. Because you definitely don't want it to be all wobbly and stuff, you know, when you're doing this. All right, so let's go ahead and hit home and do the same thing here. Let's look at our view from the front, and we're going to do the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and take the front, and I'm going to take the Y axis, and I'm going to do the same darn thing to this. And you know if you hold down Alt, Shift, Drag, and Alt, Spacebar, excuse me, and you drag in your number boxes, you get really coarse adjustment. That was added in, I think, 2009, extension 1. Uh, that's actually something uh, taken from Toxic, actually. The benefit of Toxic for, for Flame. Uh, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to move this down in Y. So it's resting right on the bottom, and we'll just go ahead and hit 0.05. So now, for all intents and purposes, that's resting there. So if I do a rotation, I'm going to rotate it, you know, right on the bottom of the bottle. Um, if I do a scale, you know, no, remember I was, this was sitting on a surface when I was working. So um, if I do a scale of it, and it's sitting on something, and it's going to just scale it down correctly as well like that. All right. Then the next thing I want to do is I'll go ahead here and we'll go to front. Let's go ahead and turn on our large center here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just position this axis right here at the large center point. Get out of this. I'm actually going to hide the camera so we don't see that. Actually, I'm going to turn off icons. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work. That's not going to work for me. Actually, you know what? We'll do on, we'll set up, turn icon selected. There we go. And so now, if I zoom in really tight, we're just going to make sure that this is really dead nuts right in the center point, like this. And then if we go to the top, we'll go ahead and do the same thing with Z. If you drag on the Z, of course, Oh, I don't want to do that. I was just uh, I was just moving the center point. If I hold the Z and move it back, now now the bottle is going to be resting right in zero zero space. And you can see what I got there with the star; it wasn't quite on. All right, so there we go. And then I'm just going to pull this up to reasonable size, and that's going to be my base for the bottle. And go ahead and turn off. There we go. All right. So again, I just want to show you that because it's going to make things really easy for us when we're working. If you really start out in a nice kind of perfect state and where your axis is, it's going to be a lot predict more predictable when you start adding movement to it. So I've got this set up. Notice that I've labeled this axis no touch. That means don't touch this axis. All right. I'm going to use this probably in a bit. But what I find is good to do is let's go ahead and take this and just group these and call it bottle. Oh. All 
And sure, we're going to probably have to hide the bottle and so forth. But this is a good way to just group these items when you're working with it and so forth. All right. So let's go ahead and save this setup. And let's go ahead and talk about just cleaning this up really quickly. These bottle stills that I had. Again, it looked a little jittery. So let's go ahead and in action. It was really quite simple to do. Let's go ahead and actually set up reset all. Go ahead and add that and that to it. And background resolution. Let's apply and scale. There we go. Gotta love that feature, huh? So all I did is I took this and just brought this in. I'm sorry, added the media to this, turn the mat off. We'll go ahead and just do a stabilize it. And taking a look at this, I think it was 73 frames I had. What I found that worked quite well is just this kind of intersection down here on the bottom. It didn't change much, but I had a nice line that worked quite well for us. So we take that and let's go ahead and I'm just going to bring my width out like this. And like that. Let's go ahead and analyze. You can see it tracks really nicely there. And you can see what kind of movement I'm getting there. That's not, that would be problematic if we we're going to try and map that on something because the texture obviously needs to be very much aligned. And you can see my uh, lazy Susan that was pretty lazy. Uh, for the bottom, basically what I did, I think, was taking a look at this corner intersection here. And that seemed to be pretty consistent. You had this intersection of white. So let's go ahead and move that over here. I miss, always miss that, which is why I move it manually. Let's go ahead and use the opposite end here. That's probably good white. Take our width and do the same thing. Go ahead and analyze that. And that's holding pretty well. You can see there's a lot of the same kind of hitches that we're getting in the top part. Did I turn rotation on when I came to stabilize? I can't remember. Okay. Rotation on, of course not. So you just exit in. Tracker 1 is active. Tracker 2 is active. Return. It was 73. And what's happening there? Well, basically, what we need to do is just go ahead and uh, negate our rotation. Okay, and so now we've got our bottle stabilized for the most part. Now what I did do is I went ahead and I added another axis on top of this and I started by bringing in two, two black frames uh, onto the desktop. So something like this where I just brought these in, take this like this, um, turn the mat off. Because what I want to do is I want to make sure this is really, really aligned well, right? So what I did is I did this. And I said this axis, I just, I did use an expression to do this. And I just said position Y, uh, this is equal to minus axis three dot position dot Y. Nope. Equals, right? Minus. So why did I do that? That's because then I can just take this and go like this. If I get the same scale value here, say 200 and 200, it's just a great way of having something where now I've got a, my own little grid lined up and I can just keep this bottle right between those. Okay. So I did is I just threw this axis again and that whole idea of, you know, where you want the rotation to happen. I just move this right here and put it in the middle of the bottle on the, at least on this frame. And I just use this axis to adjust this frame by frame a little bit because you can see there's a little bit of play in this still. 
and basically I wanted to make sure that it was continual, okay? But what it did end up with, just cutting the chase and showing you that, is this bottle cycle. And if we hit play, it's actually really quite consistent. A little bit off, but it works for us, okay? So go ahead and hit, you can just see. Rotates fine there. All right, so this is the image that I ended up using. It's a cycling bottle, a good loop, cutting out the first and last frames, and that's what I'm gonna go ahead and use for my textures. So let's go ahead and go back into action and load up where we were at. Here's where we're at. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add another axis for control on top of this. Kind of position this down. And let me just show you what I did um, before. What I did is, like I said, is I went ahead and added a projector. And I like doing the projector because it's somewhat easier than using a texture, as you'll see in a second, you know? You can get in a lot of problems sometimes with the texture. So what we do is I just go ahead, and if I rotate this in Z, go ahead and take this, and, and what we need to start doing is also playing a little bit with field of view, just to see um, how it matches, not just position, but just how field of view kind of works with kind of what we end up with. And you can see that that's definitely not where you want to do. You want to kind of take it down and again, just play with this until it kind of looks right. Okay. And if you take this, all I did is I just, you know, messed around with this until I kind of got it to line up. And you can use the aspect ratio, of course, and it's really tiny increments, as you can see. And again, basically it just involves a little bit of playing with the, you know, perspective and so forth. Notice that's not quite right here, but again, just match that uh, with what you shot onto this item. And one of the cool things about uh, Flame as well, and I'll show you this here, and sorry guys, it's not available uh, for in the smoke, is the deform node. What you can do is actually take the deform node and actually do subtle modifications to your bottle shape. In this case, this was a Heineken bottle, and the Heineken bottle shape had these little curves on it. And as you can see, things didn't line up. You can start to see. So what we're going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and add some more lattices here. Say three lattices, I think. It's probably pretty good. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and just take these and selectively move these. Okay, so what I can do is just take these down in size on the geometry and notice how I'm just effectively taking the bottle shape and making straight. Uh, same thing here, oh, if we want to take that, let me go back to here. We can take this and kind of move these down and kind of adjust the bottle shape to more closely match our bottle shape of the Pilsner or Kell bottle. And we definitely had that in the corners. I remember we had to kind of adjust this. So you can do these really nice kind of, you know, minor model adjustments within Flame, just using this model, uh, using the deform node. And really quick, without having to go into 3D program again, I'm, you know, I don't, I, I don't really use a 3D program that much. So for me, this is just perfect. So that's kind of what I ended up with the bottle. Now, of course, the top is, is messed up, of course. Now, take a look at this. What's really cool about this is taking the camera and orbiting around. I have set to free. You can get so much more movement here by rotating the camera. Now, you'll start to see some problems here at the edge, and we're going to talk about how to deal with that. But again, it looks way more believable by doing this, and you start to see why you want to have and why you can use the projector or texture, as I'll show you in a second. Um, just compare it to this. Let's go ahead and add this image in. Go ahead and hide this branch. Rotate this around. Scale it down. Go ahead and hide projector as well you know so obviously 
taking my camera and orbiting it around really doesn't work well. And that's basically the gimmick of why you want to use these projectors, because you can do kind of nice moves on it. And, and this is the same kind of stuff I think we showed maybe in some of the flame classes. You can just do some camera mapping examples, really simple product things, really simple to do with simple geometry. But, you know, take a look at this. This is just way more, incredibly more dynamic than what you would get if you just start playing around with stills, all right? And again, it's all in flame. I'm really not using a 3D program. I'm using a 3D model, but not using a 3D application per se. Of course, action is a pretty kick-ass 3D compositing environment. All right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and reset the camera. And let's go ahead and just take a look also about just this main gag that I'm doing, right? Um, the whole idea behind this is that I want to be able to take this media layer and just slip it. And when I slip the media layer, you totally get the illusion that the bottle's rotating. I'm not rotating the bottle, okay, but you have the illusion that the bottle is rotating. So that's the whole gag of what I want to do when I get this all set up and ready to go. So let's take a look at some of the maths behind that. Let's just talk about that for a second. My thinking behind this was that I would have this axis and I would call this say uh, bottle move. And what I want to do is I want to actually take this bottle and when I rotate this bottle in Y, I want it to rotate around like we're seeing. Okay, you can see my rotation because that deform node that thing that I did there. You can see them actually having some impact on the bottom. So what I want to do is actually link the rotation to the slip value. So if I say rotate, you know, this 180 degrees, I get a slip value of half of my 72, which is 36. And we're looking at the backside of the bottle. Okay, so that's the concept behind what I'm wanting to do with the expression. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's assume we have a bottle, one rotation, where it's set to zero, we want to show frame one of the clip. So what we'd want to do is have a slip value or frame to slip of one. That would be our function. Say we're at 180, we'd want to be displaying frame number 36 in the clip, right? And so what we want to end up with in our expression is frame to slip 36. Same thing for a uh, value of 270. We want to be showing frame 52 of the clip. So we'd want to end up with frame to slip 52. So you know, and then back again, we go over to 540, which is over 360, we want to come back to frame 36, because that's effectively showing the backside 360 plus 180 is 540. So we'd want to have a frame to slip value of 36. How do we make this happen? Well, this is the kind of math when I was working on this time trying to figure things out. And we've kind of been through this before. Take a look, you know, bottle rotations at 90, I want to be showing frame 18 of 72. And if you do the math, it actually works out pretty well. If you take it and you say 90 divided by 360, so we have the bottle one rotation dot y divided by 360 times 72, you get 0.25 times 72, which is 18. Great how the math works out in that case. 180, same way. We take our bottle one rotation y divided by 360 and multiply it by 72. Brilliant, we get 36. 540, we get 540 divided by 360 divided by 72, 1.5 times 72, and you can see that's not gonna work for us because by having a value that's greater than one, we're gonna be at frame 108, which is past the frame of our clip, 72, so we're SOL in this case. What do we need to do? What we, what we need to think about is you, you kinda need to think about keeping everything between zero and 360. We need to find effectively the remainder of what's left. Remember when you did math, you know? You take 540 divided by 360. Um, let's do the old paint thing. I love doing the old paint thing. So we'll take and you have uh, 360 into 540. That goes one time. Uh, 368. And you leave with 180. All right. So we have 180 ending up here. So we want to have, so that would work for us because we have 180. Uh, that divided by 360.5, that would work out just like this one, right? Was, is there a function for that built into expressions? Why, well, sure enough, there is. Basically, it's using the mod function. Basically, what you do is you give it two values, and you say mod, and you take 180 divided by 360. So 180 comma 360. So in their case of 180 divided by 360, um, 
that's basically equal to 0 when you're doing a divide, but you have a remainder of 180. So what this function would return would be 180. Similar, 540 and 360, the remainder is 180. Uh, 360, 360 would be 0. 720 divided by 360, that's even. You know, you get a 2, but no remainder. For 361 divided by 360, you'd have 1 left over, and 370 divided by 360, you'd have 10, all right? So the mod function is just basically giving you the whole remainder of what's left over. So that's brilliant for our purposes, right? If we take a look at this, let's take that value and divide it by 360, we end up getting those values that we talked about before. You know, uh, 180 divided by 360 is 0.5, uh, 600 uh, 365 by 360, 0 0.66, 0 0.27, all these things work out really well for us when we're doing this. So this is going to be kind of the root of our function. We'll have this set up for us. So if we have bottle rotation y of 540, we'd have mod of bottle one dot rotation dot y, 360 divided by 360. So you break this all down, ends up being 0 0.5, and we get 36 down here at the bottom. Now, this is our expression for media one slip for each of our, for our slip rotation layer. We'll start really simple. We take the mod of bottle one rotation dot y comma 360 divided by 360. We multiply that by 72. And then we can close that all in a frame to slip. Then the next thing that we do, just to make sure, this, this will actually break for us if we go into negative values. Uh, there is an expression that I wrote that uh, will work regardless of whether it's positive or negative. But in this case, all we need to do is add plus 360,000 to our rotation. Basically, all that's doing is that's ensuring myself that it will, I won't rotate the bottle 1,000 times, okay? I'm not going to have a rotation value of 360,000, the negative, the other way, okay? So basically, this just keeps all our rotation values above zero. So that's the expression that we ended up with for our media one slip layer. So let's go ahead and head back into action. And before we get out of this, just one more trick for the flame folks in the class. One thing I was kind of toying with when I was doing this is utilizing some of the possibilities that you can have with the new uh, shading functionality. In, uh, and actually 16-bit uh, floating points. So let's go ahead and just apply. And if we take our geometry, what you can do is you can take your geometry and set it a diffuse down to 50. and change our projector to be spotlight. And you can see we start to get a little bit of lighting. Now in this case, that's probably not necessarily what we want. Um, you know, if you turn this on, you can see that this, we're starting to have an impact on light. So what we can do is you can go ahead and add lights to your scene, position them back and so forth. And again, because we don't want to clamp values, let's go ahead and turn our clamp colors off. What you can do is actually you can just take and start blowing things out kind of interestingly, if you wish. Um, it's another benefit actually of using in the case if you want, you can actually use 16-bit floating point imagery here uh, for these files if you want for the camera stills. Um, in my case, I'm actually not uh, doing that. I'm using JPEGs, but I did start out taking a look at doing that. And you'd have really a wide range of actual exposure values in your bottle if you want to do some crazy color corrections. So you could basically take and shoot multiple stills, bracket your exposures, create raw files, and ex uh, export 16-bit uh, flunk point EXR files. So you'd have a tremendous amount of grading control within action. In this case, I just used the JPEG, but still, you get the idea. You can actually, you know, you can have some fun with the lighting if you want, uh, maybe a little bit more than you could. Um, using this mode. So I suggest sometimes using spotlight mode with your projector to get things set up, but that's a flame only thing. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and delete these and let's go ahead and just, we're going to use a texture and the textures are sometimes a pain to deal with, but uh, we'll go ahead and use it. I'll go ahead and turn deform off on that even. And I'll take a bottle and we'll add a texture. Now textures can sometimes be problematic. Generally, if you have UV coordinates that are associated with the model, but this FBX model doesn't. And when you add a texture, and we're going to go ahead and it defaults, of course, to um, reflection, as you're seeing here. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and put this into wrap mode. And when you do that, in general, if you have if this set up without UV coordinates, you're going to have um, the texture coordinates be in the lower left-hand corner. 
And that's actually really useful for positioning and, and scaling and so forth as we're working. Because if you take this, let's just go ahead and do this with wrap and no repeat. You can tell that the scaling really works well for us there in the lower corner. Now the other thing we can do is we can actually, if we want, go ahead and move the center up to be in the middle of the image, which is approximately 1500 because we've got a 4000 by 3000 image. And then of course we're going to need to bring the texture back down. If you want to get crazy, you can also kind of move this in. If we look at the front source here, you can see that we can move the axis in say about 600, 500, 600 or something because our image is 4,000 pixels. So go ahead and do that. And sometimes it's just nice to have a frame of reference when you're scaling. And again, as you move this, you're going to have to move this off because I have scaled this already. And put a value of 18. And at least this will get us close um, as far as our scaling and so forth. And again, you can see it's much easier to scale this way because you have a frame of reference. Um, our cap actually needs to be rotated. I'm just going to hide that for now. Um, so let's go ahead and then rotate this. Of course, you want to do it just minus 90. I, I find this, this is the other reason I, I kind of ended up going to the projector mode more than, um, if we set this up now correctly, we should be good here. And kind of set up our texture. And again, see, I can just scale this in X because I've rotated. But we can get this to fit really nicely if you're scaling. And again, this isn't going to work quite as well for this purpose because, as you know, we have this um, bottle shape is not quite the same and in smoke. But really, in smoke, you can get away with a lot of this. All right, so there's our bottle. Let's go ahead and save this as a work in progress. And you can see now that uh, we're looking good here. All right, but again, you know, we've got a little bit of problems here as we're going to be animating around. And right now, of course, I'm just going to be dealing with um, the uh, bottle part and not the bottle cap at this point in time. Um, let's go ahead now. And what we want to do is go ahead and work on our slip equation here. So if we remember correctly from what we had before, we can enter our uh, function here on our slip layer. What I want to do is I want to go ahead, and this is going to be my rotation. Again, you can see I've got this set up. Now the problem is, what we need to do here, remember when I was doing the projector, the projector was static, it wasn't linked to the bottle, right? So um, in this case, what I'm going to have to do is counteract this rotation. So I've got this rotation going around, I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm just going to do the inverse rotation on no touch. So let's go ahead and come down here. And no touch rotation, we're just going to say, bottle move dot rotation dot y and we'll just invert this like that so now when I rotate this nothing happens okay the bottles rotating uh, but we're counteracting it by you know rotating it back below in the hierarchy now the reason I want to do this is because like when I'm rotating I want to use rotate I want to have to do slip to animate my rotation I want to use the rotation value because that just makes sense to me you know I'm doing a bottle rotation I want it to match so it makes sense so let's go ahead now and enter our expression for that go down here media layer one our slip and let's go ahead and enter what we had before we had frame to slip 72 times mod, you know, I really hate worrying about the uh, <laughs> parentheses here, uh, bottle, in our case, it's bottle move dot rotation dot y plus that 36, 360,000, let's make it just to be safe, as I said, and then comma, 360. And then we want to divide that by 360. And let's add another parens. <laughs> and I've actually got it working correctly. Hard to believe, but true. So now if I take the bottle move and I rotate it around in Y, 
you can see now that I'm rotating the bottle. Well, I'm not rot no, I am rotating the bottle, I'm unrotating it, and I'm animating the slip in our media layer. So that's actually pretty cool. So again, you can see you got a slip of 60 there, and then we just rotate this around in the back, and you got a slip of 31. All right, so the rotation and everything is working quite smashingly for us, and that works great. But remember we had that a little bit of that problem when I started moving this off axis, right? It became a bit problematic. So what we want to do is I'm going to take this move. Watch what happens. If I go ahead and move this all the way over, you start seeing this tearing along the edges. And I got that with the projector as well. What I need to do is I need to figure out a way to compensate to actually rotate the bottle back towards me, okay? I need to kind of rotate it back. And let me just do this like that. So we're always facing like that. Now that's a cheat, I know. Okay, but in this case it didn't work, you know, it worked fine for this. And so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to use this cool function called a look at function. So let's go ahead and just reset this and go back. There you go. Let's take a look at that. I've got that set up. Now it's really cool actually. Basically you apply this to the rotational parameters in hierarchy, for instance, you know, an axis rotation, and you do it to the whole vector. So you do it to X, Y, and Z. And basically, in this case, what we have, we have an observer and a target. In our case, the observer is the bottle, and it's looking at the target, which is the camera. And you say, look at target position, comma, observer position. And what this will do, this will re return a rotation value for you. And that way, what it will do is it will orient your object and rotate it. So it's always facing the object that you're telling it to look at. In other words, it's always going to face the target position. So let's go ahead and go back into action. And let's just go ahead and import um, a box. They're really easy to see. And it's a lovely discrete box. Go ahead and hide this. Position it down. Okay. What we'll do is we'll go into our animation menu, and what we want to do is we want to apply this to the rotation, okay? So it's going to be look at target position, which is camera dot position. And then we want to do our position, or the observer. In this case, it's the discrete box. And we'll type um, axis two dot position. And now, as we position this around, it's always looking at us. No, so notice it's kind of done that. It's actually entered rotation values in all the categories. So now it's pointing down at us. Let's go ahead and just zoom way out here so we can see this. It's still pointing down. Go ahead and move it down like this. Actually, a good place to see this is kind of the side. And you can actually see how it's kind of facing back. So as we move this, it's tilting up and down, pointing back at it. So what we want to do is we want to do that to the bottle. We just want to kind of adjust our rotation with the bottle, and we want to do it with the texture. So we've got a couple things going on here. The first thing that we need to do is the rotation is always um, a vector format, okay? So what we could do is we can say, okay, we have this no touch here, um, and then we have this bottle move that we have here as well. So what we're going to do is we know since we had this in zero zero that we'll go ahead and center this back here. And we'll unhide this. Okay, so we're, we know we're always in zero, zero in this case. What we could do is we could kind of move, um, move this down. But right now we know that our bottle movement here is at the same position as our other axes. Okay, so we're going to be okay. What we want to do here is in this bottle rotation, we already have something here that's minus bottle move dot rotation. Okay, so in theory, what you'd want to do is you'd want to add the look at rotation Y to this as well. And I'm not going to worry about having it rotated in X and Z in our case. Um, I'm actually going to use that to our advantage because we, it does actually work quite well on that. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add a dummy axis. Okay, and this axis is going to be kind of an axis calc. And we'll call it rotate calc. And we're going to use this as just a temporary placeholder for our Y rotation. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and here, 
we'll say, for the entire rotation channel, we'll call up what we had, uh, look at camera.position, and we're going to say is bottle move.position. And that works. And you can see now that, hopefully, let's go ahead and uh, position this over like that. And if we look at Rotate Calc, you can see that uh, we're going to have a little bit of Y rotation. So it's going to be kind of pointing back to us. So let's go ahead now. And so what we want to do is we want to take this no touch rotation that we have here, which is right now minus bottom move rotation. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add it, Rotate Calc, Clack, Calc dot position uh, rotation dot y and when we do this you'll see that now this bottle has kind of rotated back to us so, so go ahead and undo and redo so now when I move the bottle from left to right see it's doing a tiny bit of rotation for us just to make sure that we're always looking kind of the right way and we're not seeing any of those seams. Now again, it's admittedly a cheat, I know that, but for our intensive purposes, when we're doing this animation and we're doing this very graphic animation, it's just gonna work out fine for us. And again, we're kind of ignoring all the other rotation and so forth in this case. So again, it works out really well. So those are the basics of our animation and how we do this. Let's go ahead and just take a look at this here the rotation adjustment that I did for rotating the bottle we did we did negative bottle underscore move dot rotation dot y that's the part that counteracted the rotation of the axis above once again it's because I was using textures I actually didn't really want to rotate the bottle when I did projectors I didn't have to worry about that with textures I did and then we're adding to it the rotate underscore calc dot rotation dot y just allowing us to go ahead and um, adjust for that kind of weird wrapping and seam at the edge. The last thing I want to do is just really quickly talk about um, some of the setups that I did for it, just to kind of show how I had things set up. So let's go ahead and dive in and do that. And load up. First, I want to just talk about this scene. And again, this just points out how close you can get and how giant and majestic this bottle is. Um, go ahead and turn off the icons here. Uh, you can see that it really does allow you to do a really nice tight move on this. And again, I'm using projectors and, you know, you, you're really able to get a lot out of this. Now, I've got a little bit of a problem right there, but I'm actually not too worried about that. It's going to fall off. Um, and then the, the thing is, that's really critical in this point is just going ahead and just adding that depth of field to this with a high samples and a high softness. Um, it just really makes all the difference in the world in, at least in my feeling about how things look. And by animating, you know, the depth of field, you can actually make sure that this uh, logo always stays in focus the whole time. So again, I think this really added a nice impact to what I did. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is the uh, dancing bottles uh, that we called. And again, this, this will kind of show you how you know, it was really critical to actually have these things rotate back to us. But, you know, you can really do some nice uh, uh, moves in this. And it does kind of move a little slowly here because we've got such a big uh, action setup. So we've got lots of stuff going on, we've got all this movement. But, again, it ac accessed all corners of the screen. And based upon, you know, their position and everything, we still had it rotating nicely and correctly so that, you know, I didn't get any of those seams in or anything. And again, this just ends up being a pretty decent look. Um, took a little bit of time. This is kind of a large, uh, I have lots of samples set up for rendering and so forth. But again, uh, it was kind of critical to do that and, and what I did. And it was way faster than doing this, I feel, especially me, do, but doing a 3D program. Uh, I also had a high texture or a high quality, um, uh, where is it? There it is. I think they're all hidden here in the groups. I just did this to open up the group here. You can see that I got the bottle and I've got the projection, uh, the cap on it as well. I've got a really high res texture of the cap that I was actually projecting down on the top as well. But again, so I got those f flat renders out of the action setup. But again, the thing that I really want to do is go ahead and grade it. And I did a significant, you know, fairly significant amount of grading. Um, and they're just adding some vignettes. So this is, you know, this is what I ended up with. Um, on the outside, you know, you can see it's just, this is the action setup, no shading or anything, pretty flat. 
And then, uh, you know what, one thing about this is I did have to do lens flares. And I recreated it for this, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it. But, uh, boy, the lens flares I did for the client were way over the top. Um, but again, you can see now what I did with it is just add a lot of uh, vignetting to this as well. Um, I, I'm a big fan of doing this, and it really just helps the look. A little over the top on the uh, lens flares, of course. But um, again, the, the big difference here, you know, if you just take this into uh, color correct with the front and the back, I wonder if the, uh, they are the same bit depth. Um, you can just kind of see the original here in the vignetted version. Um, things like that it just really kind of focuses in and I did again a little bit more grading again that really you know this scene really helps focus in on that so again that's just the kind of stuff that I'm just generally always doing to things as I'm um, you know working with them just kind of putting finishing touches on again I, I did this demonstration um, could have spent a little more time here um, and notice here at this point I have a little bit of an error um, notice this is rotating backwards at this point because I'm above it, but uh, it actually happens so quick that you can't see it, actually, unless you go back and still frame on it. Well, that's it for this week. Let's just go ahead and take another look at this uh, adjustment here, these uh, calculations or these expressions that we've got going on. And then uh, here's the other, the actual ending up for the, uh, what I'm calling Rebel 3D, the slip function. Uh, just, again, I know there are shortcomings to this. It's not the best thing in the world. I looked at doing things like adding sweat and, you know, drips to it, but then just ended up, it was so quick. I had such a tight turnaround that, again, it's just one of those things that is great about Flame is that I could kind of do this um, in not the most ideal situation is kind of turn that negative into positive and get the job done. So, again, it was, it was fun and uh, just fun to shoot this. Actually, I have a friend, uh, Paul Roskus, who actually did a thing where he uh, had some talent on a turntable, sitting on a turntable, and he shot people rotating around, and then actually ended up kind of comping them into this helicopter. So you could have, even though they were really tiny, you could have people that were kind of rotating, you get the back of the head as the people traveled through this uh, th CGI helicopter. Pretty cool. So this kind of technique can be used rotation, animating slip, and bringing uh, footage in to action like that. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, as always, we really appreciate you being part of FX PhD. If you have any questions, drop by the forums, and we'll see you next week.